welcome back to my channel. Um, in today's video, I wanted to um, review a book I've been reading recently on the immune system. It's called uh, The Immune System. It's written by Paul Kleneman. It's a very short introduction. It's part of a very short introduction series, which is a great range of books. Um, short books um, on many different topics. Um, I got this book because I'm interested in the immune system, particularly in the context of the current pandemic, and I wanted to find out more about it and just to refresh my knowledge. So I wanted to review this book, so I wanted to do a sort of 101, if you like, on the immune system in this video, just to provide you some interesting facts of the things I've learnt. So immunity um, is actually um, a Latin, it's derived from the Latin for privileged, which makes sense. Because the average person is susceptible, um, you know, to get disease. Um, if you're if you're immune, then you're un it's an unusual state. You're protected. The immune system can be regarded as a system to maintain the status quo within within the body, um, providing um, a homeost homeostasis, a state of balance, equilibrium. Also, um, if, if the immune system is one of the is one of the oldest um, evolutionary processes. Even even bacteria um, have immunity to infection uh, because because bacteria can suffer threats from viruses that are able to hitchhike onto the bacterial DNA. So so even bacteria have a, a kind of um, a basic um, set of immune responses uh, against viruses. The human immune system is not limited to a single set of specialised cells with discrete functions, but it's embedded in every single cell in the body. All cells in the body contribute to immunity for their ability to sense infection. Uh, the skin, incidentally, provides a very important uh, host defence um, in the form of dead cells, a, a, a dead cell wall, and antimicrobial fatty acids. For viruses, which require a live cell for replication, the presence of a dead cell layer at the skin's outer surface represents a wall of death, preventing access. And as I just mentioned, the skin also contains antimicrobial anti fatty acids, which provides bacterial protection. Now, on the skin surface, the skin on the skin surface contains many, many um, different types of bacteria, and normally um, there's a sort of peaceful coexistence with the multiple bacteria because it can sometimes cause serious disease if the bacteria invade other sites. The thin mucous membrane protects the upper respiratory tract and the lungs. And um, there's also something which you probably can remember from when you did GCSE level science. Something called, if I pronounce this quickly, the ciliary escalator, where the cells that line the lungs possess tiny hair-like structures in the form of cilia, which beat as a group. And, and together, this leads to the continuous movement of the mucus lining the airways up and out of the lungs, which provides a very important defence against microbes. Because bacteria are trapped in the mucus and they're swept away from the sensitive sites. Now, another interesting fact. 90% of cells in the body are bacterial. Makes you sort of question who is in control here. Hmm. Interesting question to ponder. Because 90% of cells in the body are bacterial. Most of these bacteria um, reside in the gut, the microbiome. This complex flora are held at bay by the thin epithelium of the gut, accompanied by its own mucus layer. But these bacteria can cause serious disease if they cross this membrane. So now we're going to have a little look at some uh, blood, uh, white blood cells now, the leukocytes, uh, which are generated in the bone marrow. Um, now, there are different types of leukocytes, of course. Uh, the lymphoid leukocytes 
uh, develop in the lymphoid structures. And the lymphoid structures uh, include the, uh, the thymus, the lymph nodes, and the spleen. Now, the thymus, uh, was, which resides in the central part of the chest behind the sternum, and that's most prominent in children, it later becomes atrophied, replaced by fat in adulthood. The thymus is crucial because, it's, because it is required for the development of T-cells, literally meaning thymus-derived. If no thymus develops, there is a serious risk of infection. The, 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 um, now, the T-cells are mainly found in, in lymphoid tissue along with B-cells. And uh, again, a little bit of uh, basic science GCSE reminders. Obviously, the, um, now the lymph nodes obviously reside in the neck, the armpits, and the groin. They're the small mobile structures you can feel. Um, and get obviously inflamed during illness. Yes, the lymph supplies the nodes. Immune, now, this is something that I find really fascinating. Like the immune system has been described as a floating brain because both the nervous system and the immune system must respond to internal and external cues and both must learn in addition to following preset behaviours. So the innate responses are the, are the responses that we're born with and they respond immediately to infections generally. And there's also the adaptive responses and they're learned. They're learned and specific responses to individual infections. It obviously takes longer to respond to threats the first time, but it has a quality, like the brain, of memory, which is based on specific infections inducing populations of lymphocytes, which are um, in the form of memory, B and T cells. Another um, crucial part of the immune system is that it needs to distinguish the self from the non-self. Um, in, a, in a healthy immune system, the presence of the self will result in no response. It's learned to tolerate the self. That's crucial. And, and it, but it needs to respond to antigens that are dangerous. There needs to be a response there. Danger is sensed by, in the innate immune system, danger is sensed by something called, a long word this, pathogen-associated molecular patterns, PAMPs. And these are predictable features common to microorganisms. Okay. which are antigens derived from proteins, etc. So the immune system has to sense, and, and the cells that can sense danger have to use, um, use multiple, the, cells have to, the immune system has to sense danger um, using multiple sensors. Okay. So, for example, bacteria possess an array of common PAMPs, which can be sensed by the host cells. Uh, for example, a molecule known as lipopolysaccharide, which is part of the outer membrane of many bacteria, can be sensed by the immune system. And viruses also generate unique danger signals as well. They also have their, um, their own PAMPs. So the innate response encourages um, inflammation, where there's a local accumulation of activated cells and tissues responding to injury. And uh, the early response is mediated by the interferon system. Um, interferon signaling molecules also play an important role in instructing the adaptive immune response and generating immunity over time. Now, viruses are intracellular parasites, okay? So viruses, um, literally, they hijack the cell. They hijack the cell's machinery. Um, whereas bacteria replicate outside cells and therefore require a different immune response. And this brings in a subset of innate immune cells known as neutrophils. Um, and, this, and this is for bacterial and fungal defence. Now these neutrophils, um, they engulf the microorganisms, which is something called phagocytosis, followed by a generation of toxic mediators, a form of biological bleach. And then once the microorganism is taken into the neutrophil, it's then destroyed by digestion. The immune system also contains something called a complement system. Now, the complement system directs and organises neutrophil activity made in the liver and then circulates in the blood. So is, the complement system is basically a team of proteins. So um, that's a complement system. It directs and organises neutrophil activity. 
Um, and the complement system is made in the liver and then circulates in the blood. Bacteria which have been decorated with complement components so are easier for the, phag for the phag phagocytes to destroy. Other complement components can bind to bacteria to create the pores in the membrane and destroy them. Lymphocytes can also play a role in the innate response in the form of natural killer cells. And the innate response is also mediated by the T and B cells. And now the whole body is involved. The whole body is involved in the acute response. So it gets the secretion of soluble mediators like interferons. So these are signaling molecules. And um, cytokines um, which, act, which act at a distance. Uh, now, in the liver, in response to the cytokines induced by bacteria, the liver secretes proteins which aid the immune response. Um, the interferon is crucially resulting in a feeling of sickness, and the cytokine re release results in uh, fever. Now, B cells are very important in adaptive immunity. B cells are another, form of, are another type of lymphocyte, and they're developing a bone marrow. And um, they secrete antibodies, okay, specialised proteins that bind to a particular target, uh, the outer coat of a bacterial virus, which is known as the antigen, uh, and it blocks the infection. The antibodies survey the extracellular environment, whereas the internal cell environment is the domain of a T cell. Um, T cells need to sense the internal proteins of a cell, for example, a virus that is replicating within a target cell, okay. Right, so I'm going to move on to video number two now to carry on this 101 of the immune system. So moving, moving over to video number two now.